All right, are we up? We are. Thank you so much for being here at the 14th Annual Women's Health and Fitness Expo. And by the way, it's supposed to rain today. I'm Kimberly Kay, and I'm on Mix 97, so I do the weather 100,000 times a morning, and it's supposed to rain off and on all today, so it's a great day to be indoors. Our next speaker, Ellen Barrett, is known worldwide as the creator of best-selling DVD workouts, including Prevention Magazine's Flat Belly Diet Series. I love that. She starred in Fit TV's All-Star Workouts and serves on the Family Health Advisory Board for Family Circle. Her latest book, The 28 Days Lighter Diet, blends women-specific exercise, diet, and lifestyle strategies for optimal physical and emotional health. And Ellen will be right outside the door signing her books after her speech. So please help me welcome Ellen Barrett. Thank you. I actually don't have to stand here because I'm mic'd. I said I kind of move around. I'm a fit pro, so I'm always like jumping jacks, step touch. Uh, but so I'm very physical. So it's so nice to be here. I'm really happy that this is such a positive event. It's very, it gives me faith in the world. There's a lot of preventative medicine out there. There's Western doctors that are completely open to complementary doctors like acupuncturists and massage therapists and Reiki masters. It's really cool, really cool. It fits right in with my book, The 28 Days Lighter Diet. I co-authored it with my buddy, Kate Hanley. You'll see some clips of Kate in this. She's here in spirit, but you'll see her in the PowerPoint presentation. So I want to just give you a little background about my own self, just so you have a sort of reference point. I consider myself a messenger, and I consider myself just someone that brings the energy up. That's my goal. Create optimism, enthusiasm, inspiration, and get people psyched about who they are, what their state of health is, and know that the ball is always in your court. You always have so much involved with your wellness. And it takes away that victimhood that people feel when they get sick or they have knee pain or they are overweight and they just feel really helpless. You're never helpless. And you never need money or anything outside of you to get better. Sometimes it helps and it can expedite it, but you yourself can correct whatever's going on. I believe in curative powers. I don't believe in just managing or coping. I believe you can turn things completely around. And I've seen it with so many of my friends and colleagues and, and students that have worked with me over the years. So I have um, a huge uh, cause and effect list where it really does work. I believe it. It's not just this idea. So the 28 Days Lighter Diet is women's specific wellness. We use the menstrual cycle as a foundation to how we live. The ultimate thing here is to pay attention to how you are every day. And from the inside out, we live our life. The problem is, this is never, ever, ever mentioned in any wellness or weight loss book that's specifically about weight loss and exercise. They think we come up to bat every day the same person. Women change a lot, and the change is natural and normal. So every week is different. Our energy shifts, the way we sleep, the way we eat, the way we move, our posture, it affects everything. So this book originally was called 28 Days to Better, but our editor wanted it to be weight loss, diet, which is fine because I'll play that game because it, weight loss is a huge symptom of getting really better. You find the right weight and you stick with it and it's hunger-free weight loss. It's amazing. Who thought, right? That's another big thing, hunger-free weight loss. We always think deprivation. But anyway, I'm getting ahead of myself. I'm an exercise bunny and I came up through the ranks. I did crunch videos. I was the girl wearing the little tiny outfit. I just loved fitness, and I wasn't very deep with how I was thinking about it. I just loved it. It was a mood booster for me. 
I grew up in a snowy town and I felt like it kept me warm. And I think my parents were a little depressed, not too motivated about life, a little under the weather about their status in the world. And it was this place where everyone was happy. So I take that with me even now moving into the women's wellness world and not totally leaving behind women's fitness because that is a huge, major component to women's wellness, which we'll talk about too. I noticed over the years that everyone I trained, all these women that I worked with, they always complained about PMS or infertility or they had to have surgery, laparoscopic surgery to remove tumors and fibroids. No one was well. No one. <laughs> really fit women and not so fit women. They all had some sort of gynecological discomfort. It might just be painful periods. That was where I came from. I was great 27 days out of the month, and then that 28th day, or the 28th you know, day, when my day one of my period, I was in major pain, debilitated, bent over, barfing. I'd go to the doctor, they'd say, oh, you could take pain medicine. They didn't think it was that serious because all the tests didn't show anything. And I thought, there's something, I'm, everything, I'm doing everything right. Why, why is this happening to me? And literally, it wasn't until I was trying to have a baby that I investigated all this stuff. And I was like, oh my God, there's so much going on that I'm not educated on and I've been doing wrong. I've been working against my cycle instead of working with it. So I'm, I feel really excited that I sort of figured things out for myself and I no longer have those days and I wanted to share it with other people. I also started working with my training clients to have this sort of understanding, this tuning in and letting the body guide you. And then I saw amazing changes People that used to gain 10 pounds during PMS no longer had that extreme weight, weight reten water retention. They didn't need two sizes of clothes in their closet. So it's pretty significant. When you, when you do these little things, they can be so powerful. And it has nothing to do with pharmaceuticals or surgery. It's you, how you live your life, how you work out, how you eat, how you sleep, and other lifestyle things that are very easy and totally free. So that's what this book was about. And it really came from a need to get this message out there. I was just telling some authors out there that I hope I don't have to write another book. Please, please, God, don't make me do it again. It's not my forte. It's a little too much for me. I wanted to be step touching. <laughs> I want to be doing the Pilates roll up. Anyway, so here it is, the women's, uh, women's book. We were, I want, really wanted to call it Women's Diet, but that was taken. So here we go. This is Kate, my co-author. We are buddies, and I'm gonna show you, I'm gonna just play this a little bit. Does this play? Oh shoot. This is actually supposed to be a video. Can this play as a video? Oh yeah, it's supposed to, oh yeah, oh I got it, right here. How this idea of the book came was really, we, want, we okay. wanted a book like this, and there wasn't one out there, but it started off as, it was really good synergy. I... It's okay. I'll explain it. It was just training women for years and years and years. Okay. Okay. There's no mouse. I'm just. How this oh. idea of the book came was really. That's okay. Yeah, I'll have a good picture of Kate. <laughs> the book came about because Kate wrote this great blog post about how she rested on day one of her cycle. We worked for Whole Living Magazine at the time as contributing editors, and we were writing these blog posts for the magazine, and she wrote a blog post that I thought was so honest and it was different than every other blog post. She basically took a day off on day one, 
whatever her cycle was, but she had the advantage because she was a freelance writer. She worked for herself from her home, so she could physically, cap she was capable of not having to go anywhere. So she, on day one, she went, stayed home in her PJs, rested, putzed around the house, didn't do anything. Immediately, first of all, that whole cycle was smooth as can be, and immediately change. There was no more discomfort. She was one of those women that gained uh, two, she gained two, she went up two sizes the week before menstruation. And just from not doing anything, so just resting on day one, it sets you up. But also psychologically, you kind of look forward to it because you're like, wow, this is going to be my Sabbath. So that's how the book came about because I approached her afterwards. We had always collaborated for articles. I approached her after I read that blog post. We had been friends for many years beforehand. And I said, let's do a whole project about this. Let's do a month-to-month, -month, whole month, whole year long you know, article, a series about this for whole living. We ended up doing a sidebar in the health, con the, sort of the health and living, you know, column in the magazine. It wasn't, a, it wasn't like this five-page spread, but it was the beginning of this book. And so we, we were both like feminists, and we were both really mad that not, nothing was ever addressed. We literally did all this research. Any book that had anything to do with the cycle was about fertility or, or about acne or some random thing. It had nothing to do with wellness, and we thought that was really strange. So here's another deal. This isn't really totally about hormones, but it's about how you affect hormones. So the first thing to notice is the endocrine system is in charge of your hormones. The endocrine system is the thyroid. Ovaries are part of the endocrine system. Glands, the pituitary gland, the pineal gland, all of these things are responsible for hormones. The endocrine system can be healed and injured. It can be affected by exercise, diet, and other lifestyle habits. So it can go either way. This is something that when you go to the OBGYN or you go to any doctor and you say, oh, I have these weight problems, they always say, you know, cut out the carbs. But there's a lot of weight problems out there that have nothing to do with what you're eating. I mean, there's millions of women that have reduced, 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 reduced their calorie content and are still holding on to the weight, are still struggling with weight issues. So what about that, right? What's going on? So the endocrine system can be healed and injured. You can do this yourself. And that's what our book talks about, is exercising, eating, and living so your endocrine system is functioning perfectly, totally perfectly. And then the weight will come off. The body wants to find a nice balance. It really does. It's trying to. The world is fighting you on that, but you can. The next one is hormones fluctuate all month long. When you see those tampon commercials or you see, you know, those jokes in movies about PMS or that time of the month, the hormones are supposed to fluctuate. PMS isn't bad. PMS is, is, is imbalanced hormones. There should be pre-menstruation where you gain a little water weight. Yeah, that's what happens. You do feel a little bit more introverted. You don't want to do small talk at a party. Yeah, it's going to bother you. It's going to bug the crap out of you, actually. <laughs> You're not going to want to go to that party and just talk about the weather you know, at that time of the month. This is really what happens because the hormones are changing. Hormones affect every single thing. Everything you can think of, they, the hair, your hair on your head, your weight, your mood, where weight is deposited in your body. Hormones affect everything. So taking it from there and going back to the fact that the endocrine system is in charge of the hormones and we can do something about that, that's pretty amazing. And this is where exercise comes in. As a personal trainer and a fitness instructor, I would see women and I started asking them a questionnaire before I started training with them. Are you on birth control pills? What medicine are you on? 
have you had fibroids? Have, I started asking these questions before I started working with somebody. And I would find the cause of the effect in that questionnaire. I would know why they were always struggling to lose five pounds or 10 pounds. Birth control pills really upset the balance of hormones. Even IUDs and things that get inserted release a hormone inside your body. Um, a lot of topical creams affect hormones because phytoestrogens enter through the skin. Soy products can affect hormones extremely. So they're phytoestrogens. And you can have estrogen dominance, which helps you be soft and supple and voluptuous. But sometimes when it's too much, you're, you, cannot, you don't have any muscle tone. You can't get to the muscle tone. There's water retention everywhere. So these are things that, as a fit pro, I want to help that woman be as perfect as she wants to be. I want to help her feel great, look great, everything. But if, if they're on birth control pills, and they've been on birth control pills for 15 years, that is a hello, a major culprit of what's going on. That is something that needs to be addressed more often. We need to look at the whole picture. We need to zoom out and see. And I'm, I am just a messenger. I don't have a medical degree. But I do have a holistic health counseling certificate and degree that was, really investigates this kind of thing. And one thing is for sure is that we are prescribing medicine too easily, especially to women that is, that's hormonal related, too early. The thyroid, thyroxine medicine affects, it affects everything. It kind of masks things until the thyroid crashes and burns. There is, I mean, these are things I'm seeing it every day with people that I work with. So we can affect, we can affect our hormones. We have the power. So this is, this is another video. <laughs> Here's Kate and I again. Um, pay attention, ladies. The first step is to get a journal. I'm going to show you that. 28 Days Lighter Energy Wheel. This is what we use to journal. You can just write really simple. Day one, I feel sluggish. Day two, low energy. You know, you can just write any word. Day 16, day 17, high on life, partying it up. Didn't need much sleep. You can write all these things. The first step is to notice and pay attention and tune in. We are taught in the society to tune out. The billboards driving down the street, so much distraction. But we need to sit with ourselves and feel, really feel. So many people have their heads detached from their body metaphorically. And we're little robots, especially a lot of women. I have a sister who is a type A++ personality. And she's a career woman wearing her fancy suits every day. She was going numb in her arms, just randomly. When she was like at her desk, living her life, I was like, she tells me this. She goes, you know, I just started going numb a little bit. I was like, really? That's pretty serious. We should investigate this. She's like, oh, it's OK. I'm like, does it bother you? She's like, no, nah, nah, not really. She goes, I, was, I realized that I was a little numb up here for a long time, but now it's my fingers. So I only notice it when I'm trying to write something. This girl, my sister, had lived completely detached. She's been uncomfortable and not knew it. She just overrode the body. We need to drop down here. We need to feel here. And let this lead us, not this. Not this whole thing, this cerebral thing, is sort of overriding what's happening. And what's happening here is what you need to guide. You need to follow. It's your guide. And you also want to know that what's happening down here shouldn't be ignored. We're kind of taught to ignore it. Kate and I talk about how, in the book, we can't believe Tampax commercials. The girl is wearing white, rollerblading, jumping off a diving board, wearing a white bikini. Feeling great! Life is great! It's like, and it says, their tagline is, outsmart Mother Nature. Outsmart Mother Nature. It's a brilliant tagline. 
whoever was the publicist and the marketing genius behind that should win a major award. It's genius, but it's completely impossible. Just think about O'Hare Airport in a snowstorm. Think an airplane's getting out of there? Think about, you know, Hurricane Katrina. Just think about the ebbs and flows of your body. Think about hunger. You can't ignore that for very long. Can't outsmart that for very long. People who do outsmart it are, become, go into rehab for that. Think about if you have to pee. Do you say, I'm going to outsmart this and I'm not going to pee for five days? You don't do that. It's nature. It's mother nature. So pay attention. The first step is to sort of journal. You don't need this energy chart. This is actually in our book, and we have a blank copy, and we also have a PDF on our website, which I'll share with you later, and you can print it out. You just don't, we don't want to make a big deal about it. We don't want you to journal and be like, oh, today, blah, 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 blah. Just write one word, two words, how you're feeling. Notice how you're feeling. When I started doing this, I started charting for fertility reasons, and I would notice all these things. I would notice, oh my God, I would, in the middle of the month, I would, my boobs would feel perkier. <laughs> and then also you would notice you were extra extroverted. You're going to notice this. In the middle of the cycle, you're, you're, you know, you're out and about. You feel better. You want to be out and about. You're, you're more, you have more social stamina. You have a longer fuse. At the end of the cycle, you're shorter fused. You're more sensitive. Estrogen is dropping. You don't have as much pain threshold as you do in the middle of the month when estrogen starts to really come upon you. Estrogen is a pain reliever of, in sorts. So think about that. The first step is to pay attention and notice. Notice that this day is different than this day. Every day you come to the plate differently. And your workout, how you eat, how you sleep, how you live should adjust. And it's very subtle. I want to sleep like 20 more minutes on my, on my first week of my cycle. I kind of want to just lounge a little bit more. I also am not as hungry. I don't need to eat as much. In the middle of my cycle, I'm ravenous. I'm the girl standing in front of the refrigerator <laughs> with, the do with the door open being like, what can I have in here? What can I have in here? That's really interesting, and it's not wrong. So a lot of us think, oh, I wish this appetite would go away. Or you feel mad at yourself for being hungry. You, you should be psyched you're hungry. It's your body communicating to you. So pay attention. That's the first step. And even just doing this can change your life. And if you just feel it and then act on it, that'll change your life big time. So your cycle. It can be a roller coaster ride or it can be peaceful slopes. You decide. When women have these really, when they have raging PMS, when they have acne that's so severe, when they gain so much weight, or they eat, over, overeat, and eat such extreme stuff that week before their period, it's because something's out of whack. And you're ignoring something, and the body's screaming at you, and it wants you to pay attention. It's just your body being, it's, your body's like a little kid, right? And it's throwing a temper tantrum. And American women have been duped into thinking this is normal. And it's not normal. PMS is a problem. Premenstruation is normal. If you go to other countries, they're not experiencing extreme PMS like American women are. 85% of American women that are in the menstruating years are experiencing major PMS problems. And that's a problem. So what's it going to be, ladies? Smooth sailing, peaceful slopes, or craziness? Week one of your cycle. Now you'll see this. Week one, we've really bottomed out. This is day one. So we, in the book, we break it into three cycles, three phases. Uh, some books break it into four different phases because there's four weeks technically. And also we have this as 28 days, but it's very normal to have 22 days to maybe 38 days. So cycles can change. But week one, you can see, we call it the wise woman. You're kind of grounded. You're kind of internal. There's a lot of benefit in week one. We recommend working out very moderately, but working out maybe but not on day one. I'll tell you those golden rules in a second. But just look at those hormones. 
Week two and three, there's a lot of roller coaster there. There's peaks and valleys there. But overall, when you look at that whole area, there's a lot of hormones. It's pretty impressive. Estrogen is the big dark line. So we, if you think about that, we do have a little water retention middle of the month, and we also have high energy and a high pain threshold. So weeks two and three are party weeks. Week four, I mean, yeah, week four, phase three. We call this the vixen. So look, we're bottoming out. This is when people go, say it's a 28-day cycle and you're on day 26. Day 26, day 27, day 28, you want to just go home, shut the door, not come out. A lot of women feel that, and that's pretty natural. Look at, those, look at those levels of hormones. They're bottoming out. If you have arthritis, you feel more arthritic pain in these two days than you do the rest of the cycle. And this is a proven statistic. It's because estrogen is lower. So really key. So if you look in the mid-cycle, we want you to for sure work out. You've got the time. You've got the energy. You've got that social stamina so you can go take a workout class. You can go walk with your buddy. You could go dancing. You could play tennis. You can be social, and you can work out. It's great. In the fourth week, in the third phase, we want you to really use exercise as medicine. Cardio can boost your mood. Endorphins, that's another pain painkiller, basically, and natural, you know, Mother Nature's natural pain relief. So we want you to do cardio, but we also want you to do it solo. Go for a walk by yourself. Use your, your iPod. Just go and get into yourself. More solitude in this phase is really necessary to avoid the irritability. And it's because, look, just look at those hormones. This is really typical. The problem is, is that we tend to, in this culture, there's a lot of people that are too high here with estrogen, too high here with estrogen. It's like more up here. And then, because their estrogen is too dominant, and that makes the, the progesterone seem like it's not there. And then it drops too severely. And so it's a big, bad roller coaster. Your exercise, how you live, how you eat can change that. There is that energy wheel again. So, in the book, I won't go into it here, but we do have an eating strategy, and it's not so much what you eat, it's kind of the character of how you eat. So in phase one, we want you to really focus on warmth. We eat warm food and eat lightly. So not any big heavy meals, not any big cold iced beverages, because it really exacerbates cramping, because it pulls energy away from the womb into the stomach, into other areas of the body, and it doesn't get the job. It interferes with the job that needs to get done in the womb. So warm food, light food, light, eating lightly. So a bowl of soup is a great dinner in phase one. And if you are tuning into your body, you're going to feel like this syncs up really well. It really does. So you don't even need to know this. You can feel it from inside out. When you, when you exercise heavily, when you're also menstruating, you pull blood that all this energy is going in this area. If you even put your hand on your belly, it's hot during that phase. It's because there's a whole machine happening. You're already working out, basically, in your body. And then you go for a run, and blood is moving from there to get to your extremities, to get to your heart. And it really does throw the woman's body off. And it sets the whole cycle on a tailspin right from the first day. So we want you to eat very warm and lightly on phase one. Phase two, we want you to focus on protein. You're also going to be eating more. It's proven that your temperature increases. You do need about 300 more calories a day during certain days of that second phase. So eating more protein is great because it is a little bit more of a slower burn and it makes you feel satiated. Third phase, we want you to think hydration because water retention is the biggest culprit. Think about this. You go, you're on a diet. And every morning, you step on the scale. Every morning, you step on the scale. You go, 
oh my God, I lost two pounds today. And then two days goes by and you haven't done anything differently. You've been good, quote unquote good. You step on the scale, oh my God, I gained four pounds. This has made us psychotic because we had nothing to do with that four pounds. Hormones did. It's nothing you ate. It really isn't. It's water retention from hormones, and it's because you're on this cycle all the time. So we recommend weighing yourself on day three of every cycle, or pick a day, whatever day you want. And then once a month, if you want to weigh yourself, weigh yourself that same day every single month. And that will make you a lot more confident in who you are and what you're doing, and it won't put you in a tailspin. So think about that. You can gain so much weight. I always use this story when I was, it, like, literally, I, when I had my son, he was five days past his due date. And I remember going into the OB on his due date and getting weighed. And I remember... I gained like 10 pounds from the last week. And I remember thinking, I was only drinking fluids at that time. I had no more space. I was so uncomfortable. I was like chewing ice and like drinking lemonade. And I was not eating. I had no more space in my stomach. The, my uterus had squeezed my stomach. And then I got on that scale and I had gained like 10 pounds in a week. And it was a major aha moment for me because I was like, this has nothing to do with eating. It has nothing to do with eating. This is major. We have put so much emphasis on eating. And it's, it's important. But a lot of weight gain does not have to do with eating. All right. So phase three is hydration. Because the more hydrated you are, the less likely you're going to retain excess water. So eating hydration, raw foods, lots of fluids, Nothing overly processed because that's the most dehydrated food. So those are dietary guidelines in the cycle. Now, these are really interesting, the golden rules. And I'm going to talk for about 10 more minutes, 5 more minutes, and then we'll do a little Q&A because I'm sure there's a few questions. The golden rules are as follows. Organize your life from cycle to cycle. This is hard. We work, we live in the real world. Our world is organized Monday through Friday. So people sign up for a spin class, and they're like, oh, it's Monday. I'm going to go spin. <laughs> I want you to think, it's Monday. This might be good for me. Let me feel how I'm, what's going on in my body, and I'm going to go from there. So if I'm in phase one, I think spinning might be a little too intense for me today. So, you know, you kind of override those things. You go with your own self. Instead of, oh, Monday, I walk 10 miles on Monday, that does not have to be the case. I'm a fitness pro telling you to go easy on that level. So think cycle to cycle. The second thing is avoid tampons. I've been, we, in the book, we say minimize because we thought we would get, like, our editor thought we would have like a witch hunt after us if we, <laughs> if we were too harsh, but I'm going to be harsh. And I'm harsh in my talks about this. There's a lot of toxic stuff in tampons, and it also stops the process from happening. It really does. It interferes. I should say it interferes. So in the book, we really go on and on about dioxin in tampons is really harmful, and women shouldn't have it anywhere near them. Don't work out on day one of your cycle, or possibly day two and three. We have a lot of clients that had really, really, really heavy periods, and they went really long, and it was really interesting. When they didn't work out on day one, their period got more balanced. It was more manageable just by that one rule. Your body is already working out. There's a lot of energy happening. You already probably feel like you worked out, too, on an energetic level. Number four is view your cycle as a GPS system that's guiding you. We're actually the lucky ones, ladies. We're lucky because we actually have way more of an internal compass helping us. We're kind of taught not to pay attention to it and to ignore it and be one of the boys. All of that has, is hogwash, and it's affecting us on many levels. 
So lasting, effortless, seemingly effortless weight release. I like weight release. That's exactly what happens on this program, by the way. Weight loss is from deprivation. Weight release just naturally happens. It just falls off you. It's like cleaning out your closet. You don't need that stuff anymore. Natural, seemingly effortless weight release is from a greater mind-body connection, which is what you're going to do with the energy wheel and just paying attention. Greater sensitivity, you start noticing. And this you'll notice this too. You don't overeat on this. You know when you're full suddenly. You know when you're thirsty and not hungry. You know when you need 10 more minutes of sleep. You're honoring these little things instead of overriding them all the time. Quicker responses to imbalance. Imbalances don't go all the way anymore. You, it's like a car that's swerving. You get it back on that track, it doesn't go way off course. It stays on track. And that's really ultimately what happens with the greater mind-body connection. And then, again, fewer extremes. So PMS is an extreme Losing a day of work or needing $20 in pain medicine one, you know, one day a week or one day at every cycle is an extreme. We shouldn't need pain medicine for this. This is a natural process. It's natural and it's great and it helps us. And there's a lot of other things. We talk about this in the book that it's beneficial on so many levels for us, for women. So fewer extremes, and then you got it all going on. This is my website, and we have a website for the book, 28dayslaterdiet.com. We also have a big Facebook contingency, but I didn't want to do Facebook up here because you really just need to click on it. It's too long and annoying, and there's codes. So if you go to 28dayslaterdiet.com, you can find our Facebook information. I finished with this quote by randomly Frank Lloyd Wright. <laughs> I tried to find one from some like moon goddess, but I couldn't find one. Study nature, love nature, stay close to nature. It will never fail you. So ultimately, this is not new. It's very old. It's sort of not adding things to your life. It's stripping the blocks in your life. It's not progressing. It's regressing in a really positive way. In our book, we talk about the history of sort of women's wellness with, with everything from shamans and witch doctors and herbologists. And, and one thing we really notice is all of them, when you showed up, this was hundreds and thousands, for thousands of years, when you, women showed up with some sort of problem, the shaman or the witch or the herbologist would be like, Number one question, how's your cycle? It's a guidepost. It tells you so much about your other life. And this book isn't about your cycle. It's about your wellness, just paying attention to the cycle. So it's still a fitness and diet book and wellness book and energy book. We're not OBGYNs. We're really just messengers. We're women's health advocates. And we want women to love their bodies care for their bodies, appreciate them, and then see the benefit of doing all of that. It's really powerful. So on that note, I know I talked your ear off. Any questions? I'd love to take any questions. And I have a mic for questions, so let me get to you because we're taping. Oh, great. Um, and Ellen, are you going to be around afterwards? You're going to be signing books outside. Yes, I'll be signing some books outside, right outside the door. And are you going to be anywhere afterwards to answer questions? So do you have a booth here at all? Or yeah, be I don't have a booth, but I will linger around the bookstore for a while. Yeah. Are there any questions? Do we have some questions? Can, are there, is there a question? Can this apply also to not only your period, but hot flashes and things like that, exercise you know in the 28 days? You know, I was going to mention this also, is that if you're beyond those years, the nutrition component is really major. Dieting has left women deficient in so many vitamins and minerals. And this has affected menopause. Menopause, we know, as we know it, just like PMS, is too extreme. If you go to other cultures, it's a, very, it's a much more seamless transition for women. So thinking about how that diet that you did when you were 30 years old has affected how your menopause is going now. 
And hot flashes are really, the bot is estrogen dominance. So it's really interesting. It's very interesting. I think I'd love to do a book on that when, when we start, when Kate and I really get into those years, and I really like to address that. I do think it's a nutritional issue. And our book has a big diet and nutrition component. And our diet and nutrition component is 100% nutrient rich. The only sin is, not, is empty calories. So you can't afford to eat Twizzlers anymore, I'm sorry to say. <laughs> you have to, every time you eat, it should be something that's building you. It's almost like I always say, like if you have a date with a really great guy, you want him to offer something, right? He should have something to offer. You don't want him to be some dud, you know? So that's how you should see food. It should offer you something. It should, it, it should thrill you. It should, you know, it should taste good, but it also should be good. It should build. So organic, whole foods, Organic is really key because so many of our, our soil has been demineralized and the genetically modified ingredients has really played a role in the phytoestrogen problem and also nutrition deficiency. So genetically modified ingredients might look amazing, like that strawberry might look amazing, but when you eat it, it doesn't have the minerals, it doesn't have flavonoids, it doesn't have antioxidants, it doesn't have anything in it. So that's a major component. So the diet for this is the diet for the menopause set for sure. Do we have any questions? Anyone? If you want to ask Ellen afterwards, sometimes it's difficult from here. Yeah. I love your idea for uh, documenting, even just writing each of the 28 days. And I'm sure that yes. that works for menopause too, because I do for notice sure. myself all the ups and downs, just writing a word and how you're feeling that day and then documenting sure. where that is in the month. It's major. And you know, when you think about a couple really key ingredients, women, women and men need different things. Just like a multivitamin for women in the store, it's not just a marketing strategy. Women actually need different things. And there's multivitamins for women that are in menopause and they're different than menstruating women. The big thing is women, our ovaries and our breast tissue house iodine. So we have a bigger iodine reservoir than men. Iodine is the thyroid mineral. It's the mineral that really the thyroid thrives on and needs. If you look at a lot of people with thyroid disease, you start to see that they're deficient in iodine. And then you'll also see a relationship with their ovaries and their breasts because of iodine deficiency. So it's all related. So women need more iodine, women need more zinc. And, and that's true for menopausal women and also menstruating women. You really need those things. Iron, men, menstruating women need more iron than menopausal women. That's the only, I think that's really the only ingredient that's different. And when you look at those multivitamins, next time you go to the health food store and you look at all the options you have for multivitamins, you can see the difference and look on the back and you'll see that iron is pretty major for, uh, it's like the number one thing because we lose it every month. Um, so it's so important. But it's really, it's so nutritionally important. Um, and also, you know, we talk, we have a, we make it very user friendly. Again, we're not scientists writing this book. Kate and I are women that just care about women. And that's really where we're coming from. And we use a lot of research, but we put the words in that make sense. We don't want to get too bogged down with, with research. Yeah. Right. Right. At right. Iron being important, but after menopause, you right. should not take too much. And you just mentioned that, right? During right. menstruation. You need, you need much less and you can definitely get it through food. Um, and you know, it's interesting. I actually just did this little video clip about an iron skillet. So I was always iron deficient my whole childhood. You know, I was iron deficient when I was 13, when I started menstruating. And I was just kept on being iron deficient. Every time I went to the doctor, they're like, oh, you're iron deficient. And even when I was pregnant with my son, I was iron deficient. And, um, and what's interesting is, first of all, my periods were really painful and probably too heavy. So that's, I had this big hole every month that I had to dig myself out of. So no one really put two and two together because I still was in that parameter of everything's A-OK, -okay, right? So that's one thing about iron. But it wasn't until, and then I'm a vegetarian, so people always think you need meat to have iron. But green leafy vegetables have, more, have a lot of iron that's really highly absorbable in the body. So it wasn't that. 
I started using an iron skillet, a cast iron skillet, and honestly, it made all the difference. So all these years, I had probably 20 years where I was constantly being subscribed iron pills. I would take them for a little while. They didn't work. Then I would get, you know, the next year, I would take them for a few months. They didn't work. And then when I started using an iron skillet, my iron levels are perfect. And so that's another, we talk about that in the book, like just that one little lifestyle change can give you, I could be more, I was warmer for the first time, hallelujah, I was always freezing cold, and you have more energy. And then again, you don't have to get those blood tests to the doctors. They're like, when, when, literally when the doctor was like, check my iron and it was good, I was like, really? Really? I just thought it was my lot in life to have low iron. We have so, another question. Yeah. I was just wondering, is that because it's more absorbable because it's directly from metal? Yeah, so it that? fortifies the food. So, yeah, it fortifies the food, and I do think it is more absorbable. It might enter the food in a more peaceful way, and then you just get it at little increments instead of, like, a pill form in the morning. So I, I do think that that's what happened. You talk about exercise in your book, too. Yes. Uh, and I notice that if I think about going to the gym, I have a hot flash because I hate it. <laughs> but when I'm there and I'm doing it, it's, I realize that it's really good for me. It, it helps. Yeah, it does help. And, you know, in our book, we talk about there's one week where we want you to kind of force yourself to work out. And it's that pre-menstruation week where you're just a little lethargic, your body's a little uncomfortable, and, but the workout will always turn out to be the best thing you did for yourself. So sometimes you do have to force yourself to work out, but sometimes you have to allow yourself to, ra to rest and, and not push it, you know? Um, and a workout, if you judge a workout kind of by the way you're judging your cycle, feel your workout. You should feel it. It should be invigorating and inspiring. It shouldn't be depleting. It shouldn't irritate you. You should be able to have more energy because of it. It should give you back way more than you give it. So that's another whole thing, and that's a major talking point in our book. And having how to do that is really changing your mindset of what exercise is. It's medicine. It's a bless. Again, it's a it's a privilege to be able to do it. And if you feel good doing it, you'll want to do it. So you think of we think of exercise as this to do check off a to do list like going to the dentist. It's like no. I hate being compared to the dentist. <laughs> I like when you show up at my studio and and uh, you're like, Ugh. we would have a lot of times we'd have mothers drag their daughter and be like, she needs to work out. I'd be like, she needs to work out. She doesn't want to be here. I'm in, I'm really insulted by this. And it's because of the brainwashing of what a workout is. You know, a workout is something that should. It's almost like it's a treat for yourself. That's excellent. Any other questions? Yes, another question. It's a long discussion, but in general, if you're not feeling better after you work out, you're not doing the right thing, or you're just doing too much, or... Yeah, too much. Too much. Yeah, too hard. So it's the intensity level's wrong. The duration is too long. It might be really good for 20 minutes. I remember taking spinning classes and being like, this feels pretty good, and then my hips would hurt, hurt like in 20 minutes, and the class was 45 minutes, and I'm like, gosh, I have to just finish this. And I, I'm like, you know, I should have jumped ship in 20 minutes. So the duration, but also what you're doing. Like I am a bit, I love barefoot workouts. Whenever I'm kind of wearing klutzy shoes or, you know, a lot of people like kicking and punching and aggressive workouts. Those always really, they almost made me too hyper and I almost felt irritated. Like I feel my glands swelling. I would feel like too irritated from it. Like I needed always some soothing sort of thing, even if it was cardio. I wanted it to be like peaceful and soothing. I never wanted to huff and puff for breath either. So you never want to feel like you're gasping for air. You always want your supply to meet your demand. So for sure, how you feel, like a walk in the woods is different than a walk on a treadmill. And so it's even the environment you're in. So, and even the company you're keeping. So there's so many factors. And again, you want to feel from your inside out. You want to know what's going on. All right, Ellen Barrett, she'll be right outside signing her book, and it's called 28 Days Lighter Diet. Thank you so much, Ellen. Thank you.